Thank you and good afternoon to everyone. A very big introduction. I see myself simply as an architect, that's all. I have been listening to some really interesting thoughts on green. Normally when we talk about green, everybody talks about green building. Now you are talking about delivering care and taking care of the environment. So I may actually deviate from my prepared uh, presentation based on what I have heard a few minutes back uh, in the last uh, three sessions. Basically, I will quickly run through my uh, prepared presentation. Buildings are the first part of a hospital. They are the first things that come up. And constructing a building is an energy guzzler. You all know that. Like uh, we knew how a chocolate is being produced, just imagine how a building is going to be produced. You have to manufacture steel, so that starts from mining. You have cement, again mining. So we are extracting lots of uh, resources right from the beginning to create a building. And as we move into more and more advanced building systems, our resource consumption is going higher and higher. If we take certain considered steps right in the beginning of a building design, I think there is possibility to reduce this rampant, I'm using a word, a strong word, rampant, consumerism of resources and energy and time. So how can you uh, define a green building? Environment friendly and resource efficient throughout its lifetime. So it's not only you should not think of a building only when it is being constructed right from site selection maybe 50 years or if you are lucky 100 years later this building is going to be demolished or modified or disposed of. Like everything has a life cycle. The building also has a life cycle. So we need to consider all these aspects, site selection, design, construction, operation, maintenance, renovation, and finally demolition and disposal at a future date if we really want to do something green. I think we all know about these that we want to use less water, optimize energy, conserve natural these things, all uh, resources. A building during its lifetime could give, if properly designed, energy saving from 25 to 40 percent. Minimize natural resource consumption, material energy, minimize pollution, protect the natural environment, so some of you are doctors, some of you are administrators, maybe from small hospitals, maybe from large organizations which run many hospitals. So all of you are at one point or the other involved in creating a new facility or renovating an existing one or making one existing facility more efficient. So uh, the goals is to reduce energy consumption or increase energy efficiency. Sometimes the net consumption doesn't actually reduce, but if the net consumption can give a better output, that is also efficiency. A green building definitely, we all understand, has environmental benefits, economic benefits too, and health and community benefits other benefits which may not be very tangible. If you go to a building site today in India, we create a beautiful looking facility, but right next to it there's a huge heap of waste that we have generated in the process of creating this new facility. Any site, if you go, you could see that. If you have constructed a hospital or any even a house, you would know that from bo broken bricks to the packaging material which comes, the waste material which is lying there, 
maybe if we dig up the gardens here, just three feet, we will find a lot of waste buried here itself. If a building is uh, designed properly and we can design with all these parameters which we were seeing before, there could be a lot of economic benefits. Straight away, you are going to save in energy consumption. There is enhancement of asset value if you have a good building. Say now, like you have accreditation for health services, a building also can be assessed and there are agencies which will give you a rating. In India, we have uh, Griha and the Green Building Council, GBC, both rate a building and they can give you a platinum or gold or silver rating. Sometimes that also enhances your reputation as an environmentally conscious organization, which can give you economic benefits. Health. I would just like to talk to you about this particular room. The sound system here, we are keeping it at maybe, uh, I think for the Indians here definitely, we are keeping it at a very moderate level. Why we are able to manage, everyone is able to hear, it's audible, clarity is there. Two, three reasons. One, external noise is, we are far away from external noise. The road is there, we don't hear the honking. So we are able to reduce the volume. We have enhanced it with, we have cut down the echo so that there is clarity. This has been brought, it has not happened by itself. This is a design intent. So any part of your building or a building as a whole or a campus as a whole, if you are conscious about achieving certain quality and you work towards it, the benefits can be felt. You are comfortable in this room. We are not bombarded with very high volume. So that is a straightaway health, this thing. It helps your hearing. It does not damage your hearing. Similarly, if you have a well-designed toilet, your hygiene standards are better. Like that, there are a lot of benefits in health and for the community. Cost, comfort, durability, improved resale value. Okay. We have been hearing about carbon, so I'm not going to go into that. Just one piece of data that I want. Cement production worldwide accounts for 8% of all carbon released into the atmosphere. Every building is consuming cement. Energy efficiency. More and more of our buildings are air conditioned. We will see. And this is what we do. I don't know if I walk into a doctor's clinic or an office. It is air conditioned, it has nice large window which is completely screened off, so it is dark, then you have electric lights. We have big window which we don't want to open, we close it with a curtain, we have lights, air conditioning. So no natural ventilation, no natural light, where even when it is possible to have so, such things, we want to put air conditioning and then see how efficient or uh, how good the air conditioning system we can have. So I think we have to go to the fundamentals. Air conditioning normally that's the biggest consumer of uh, power. It's about 60 percent. Lights, other equipment. So uh, when we are talking about uh, building design, I think uh, it can start right from the beginning how you are oriented your building, how you are designing the envelope of the building, equipment systems, lighting, etc. I would like to give you an example of this building. We have a site which is lengthy in the north-south direction. So if we put a building in the north-south direction, in the north-south axis, we will be having more windows or more wall area on the east and west where we have maximum sun in our climate situation. 
we could not reorient the building because the site is elongated in this direction, north south. But if you go around the building, I think there's a tour, you will see we have made, organized the building in such a way that the windows are mostly either on north or south. The east and west facades are either blank or having services on them. It is what we call orientation. So ideally we should have turned the building around, but when we are not able to do that, then you start seeing how to control that. See this is east, that is the west, and the building actually footprint is north-south. But if you see the windows are on the south, on the north. Very simple thing, which will straight away reduce the energy on because it will cut down on air conditioning. The heating load will be reduced. There is, you will be able to keep the windows open because you are not getting the sun in. Okay, I will skip through this. Lighting, as I was saying, no point in having a window and then closing it with a curtain. Design it in such a way so that you can use your windows, that you have connectivity to the outside visually and also so that you can cut down your uh, energy consumption. Say for eye care facility, major areas are used during the daytime. Uh, the, most of the OP areas are not used during the nights. If they can be lit by natural light source, by using the natural light, we are going to save a lot of energy. So how we orient the building, how we allow natural light, of course we may have to control that because if we don't control it, there can be glare and other problems. Okay. Now, uh, before I go into questions, a few things which are not in my presentation I want to talk to you. When you are engaging an architect, obviously, hopefully, that architect is a good architect or an engineer and he knows about doing a green building. But there are certain things as doctors and administrators which you can do which would help him, help her, the architect, deliver a really good building for you. We are trained to design for peak load. So if the peak load, patient load in a waiting area is going to be 100, we will design it for 100 even if that is going to be used only for half an hour. Because when 100 people are there, if they don't find seats, that's not good. So we have to design it for the peak load. Air conditioning, we will be designing it for the peak load. The summer, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, when maximum people are there, all equipment are running, we are told, we are trained to design for that. So, in your flow, when you are talking about your hospital, if you can spread the load, your uh, processes can be spread. If everybody does not come at a time, if the hospital works uh, kind of evenly, the activities are spread evenly, to the maximum extent possible. So, the 100 people do not come at one time, they come per hour 20-30 people. Then we will be designing for 30 people. So uh, things like that where you can contribute as administrators, as uh, hospital owners or doctors, that could help in bringing about a better building. Efficiency in flow. How you are going to operate what is your needs? If they are communicated to the building designers, they can design better buildings. There was uh, uh, this thing about the flow in Aravind, which was shown. Any building when we are designing, working with Aravind, 
the flow gets lot, we discussed that a lot. How? What is the flow? Can you give us a diagram? So they will also ask us to change things because my flow is different. It's happening like this. Can you redesign the building, redesign the room, locate the rooms in such a way so that the flow is much more efficient? Multi-use rooms. Say, uh, for instance, you have uh, for an operation theater, you have preparation area, you have recovery area. In the morning, the recovery is free. There's hardly any patient there because you're just starting surgery and there is nobody there. But the preparation area is full of patients. You go into the afternoon, recovery is full, preparation is not, not utilized or underutilized. If it is possible, so in the morning this is preparation, we can reduce the preparation area and increase the this thing. If we can make flexible space or multi-use spaces, that will also reduce the uh, footprint. What I want to say here is normally a rating agency or any calculation will see this is the building, how much energy it's consuming, what is the material it has gone into it, that's the kind of calculation we make. But what's the calculation we need to make? This is the building, how many people it is serving. So can the same size building, if it can serve 20% more people, then also the building becomes more efficient. Instead of adding 20% more area and by that consuming all everything, if we are reducing by efficiently designing the building, you are actually saving on resources in a great way. Extended use. I see that happening in a lot of schools and colleges in India. In the morning, they have a morning classes which start maybe at 7 and get over by 12 or 1. Evening, some other classes start. Many hospitals, actually some areas work only half a day, surgery. It works only a limited number of hours. Outpatients, limited number of hours. If we can increase the number of working, this thing. So again, you can serve more patients with lesser infrastructure. We are blessed with reasonably good climate throughout the year. Do we need for everything a built space? If we can use the garden or semi-open areas for waiting, those also help. It, they reduce energy consumption, they reduce the building footprint, air conditioning is not necessary. People are used to it or people are used to using outdoor areas. So there are so many innovative ways in which you can reduce your carbon footprint, not simply by following a set of rules in designing a building, but by re-looking at your building program itself. I think a message that I would like to share with you or to leave with you is if you are doing a new building or if you are going to renovate a building, think in those lines. The building professionals will think about how to reduce the energy consumption, etc. in the building part. But from your side, these things can be. I think with that, I would like to close.